<laughs> Wasting away again in Margaritaville. Searching for my lost shaker of salt. Some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know. Dun, 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 dun. It's the Oxfit Podcast. Nice job. That was good. I mean, we'll see. Um, we'll see how that voice. That was like a karaoke. R.I.P. Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, sorry, I don't know any of your songs. Um, it's okay. We'll listen to them this weekend. We'll live in America for two weeks, three weeks. So yeah, but I you've apologize. been you've been white your whole life. So <laughs> Still, he didn't make it to England. He didn't. I don't you guys so. love a holiday. I just don't think his music really translated. They would have loved it. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna ask my family if they know who Jimmy Buffett is, but I don't think they know. Sorry. They'd be parrot heads. That's what his followers are called, parrot okay. head. But anyway. You've been white your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy statement. Well, that's yeah. like. I love that's it. our right. culture. That was a controversial start to the episode. This could be a controversial episode. You warned me, right? I did. So this I'm could not... get pulled down from YouTube. Could get censored. One of our 17 listeners yeah. could take offense to this episode. This could get, this could get us canceled. Because you're going to say some controversial stuff potentially about what sweeteners. <laughs> The Coca-Cola Ooh, Corporation. Don't say that. Scratch that. Shh, we're in Atlanta. Yeah, That's kind of a big that. deal here. Scratch that. I'm going to open this, Steve. I didn't say it. That's a Coke product. Zevia. Is it? I don't know. No, I don't think that. I is. just assume everything is. Nope. Who is it? Zevia LLC. Oh, nice. Coke will buy it after All this. All right. Last episode, we did not provide a solution to the problem. So no, we did not. Let's just quick. We're not going to talk about this the whole time, I don't think. But as no. a part two, mm-hmm. you did a deep dive into sweetness, right? Mm-hmm. Especially the one that's most used by the zero products, like the Coke and the Sprite and the um, whatever else, zero. Mm-hmm. So it says it's got no sugar, mm-hmm. no calories, mm-hmm. but it does have... That phenylenolic, did you look up that one or no? It's like a derivative of the aspartame. So it's the same thing. Aspartame. Aspartame. I aspartame. I don't know how to say it. You were saying aspartame. Yeah, but I'm English. It's aspartame. Well, I and wasn't. that's how we're going to say it. But a aspartame. lot of things. Aspartame. Aspartame. Yeah. A lot of them are just derivatives of that. So that's the main. So that's how they get away with saying there's no aspartame in this, but. They call it phenylenolic. There's still, yeah, there still is. Okay. It's like the same thing. So talk about. The positives and the negatives, if there are any of aspartame. Well. The problem number one that you think you said to me was there's not enough research in general. And there isn't. It's still just, and that's what's frustrating is because you just read and read and read, but everything's inconclusive, right? So So how did they get approved for use then? Because there's, they don't show any like instant side effects. Because there's no conclusive Right. There's no conclusive evidence to say this group of people drank, you know, drinks containing aspartame for X amount of years. And because of that, they all got cancer at the same amount of time. That would be a crazy, hard, ridiculous study that probably won't ever be able to be done. Mm. Um, Obviously, a ton of studies with like lab rats, but that can't really be extrapolated to humans so there's just nothing long term no there's not and And there are no short-term clear side effects right so no and actually i mean in the short term it's it makes sense as a great alternative for people who struggle with their weight and they need to cut out the sugary drinks um because it's causing them to just consume such an excess of calories throughout the day i mean if you drink what three regular cokes a day what is that like probably 100 grams of sugar right maybe maybe 100 and you all you do is swap those for a coke zero and you just took 100 grams of sugar off the table that's probably objectively better for you short term short term yeah but we don't have any evidence to say long term the sugar might be more beneficial than all the artificial sweeteners that you took in. Exactly. Because there's no long-term study right. on that. So would it be better to factor in that daily, just full-fledged Coca-Cola into your diet mm. than swap it for 
a zero calorie drink with the aspartame i don't know i think and i hate this but everything in moderation yeah every once in a while if you want to go have a drink with aspartame i don't think anything bad is going to happen to you Mm -hmm. but if you're the type of person that wakes up and cracks open a diet coke which a lot lot of people do do that they go through a case 12 pack of diet coke a day Mm. and they do oh yeah okay my parents used to do that a 12 pack of diet coke Mm -hmm. a day oh yeah right so that's the level that people are consuming it so like you said, if someone goes for a 12-pack of regular Coke a day, mm-hmm. then you're looking at maybe 300 grams of sugar, which is wild, right? Yeah. Like that's a massive amount of sugar. So you trade that out for the Diet Coke or Coke Zero or any of the Zeros, mm-hmm. and you cut out that 300 grams of sugar. So mm-hmm. potentially we're saying short-term-wise, mm-hmm. you've made a better decision for your health mm-hmm. this right. week, yeah. next month, But what we don't know is that knock-on effect over 10 years. And I think that's the hard part because we want the instant gratification. And yes, in the moment, switching to a zero-calorie, zero-sugar product is going to be the better choice. But no one recognizes change over time. Mm -hmm. Over the course of a year of doing that, you're probably not going to notice that your gut isn't functioning, that you're bloated all the time, that... Maybe your body is... And are they some of the things that are potential side effects? Yes. Okay. So with all artificial sweeteners... So as bad as sugar is, Mm -hmm. your body knows what to do with sugar. Exactly. Your body, it's a natural thing. There's sugar in... Fruits. Fruits and all all of our carbohydrates, and it's naturally occurring, and our body knows how to process it. Mm. Um, And Mm. then whenever we put this artificial sweetener in all of our food um if you're the type of person that's everything you eat is sugar-free everything has the stevia everything has the aspartame then you're just kind of tricking your body and your body doesn't know what to do with it it doesn't really process it um and there's evidence to show that you it can lead you to become way less um you can be insulin resistant. You can be way less sensitive to the sugars that you're putting in your From body. the sweetness. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Because it's just, I mean, it's throwing your body off, right? Well, yeah, because that's the thing, right? It's like I could think, well, I'm going to drink this Zevia, right? Mm-hmm. Zero calorie soda, mm-hmm. no sugar in it. Mm-hmm. So if I went and got one Coke, that might be my one Coke of the week. Mm-hmm. Whereas I might drink two or three of these a day because I'm thinking, well... There's no sugar in it. Mm-hmm. It just tastes nice, and I enjoy the taste. But I'm consuming now, rather than I would just have one kind of, sh- kind of sugar a week, maybe, right? I'm now consuming three full artificial sweeteners mm-hmm. a day, and I don't know the effect that's going to have. Yeah. And so is it a good trade-off? Is We thought we were going to just have a conclusive, like, drink this, don't drink this. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting into it. We're seeing that it is way more about personal choice and Mm -hmm. you taking responsibility and thinking, like, what do I want to put in my body? And I started off the last episode by saying, I don't want you to tell me don't drink soda. But that is the only real advice that has any... That has zero side effects to it, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to be taking something in that your body doesn't necessarily want. Yeah. In all the sodas that are out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it just... Then you have to have a conversation with yourself about what... What do I want to be held accountable for? Do I want to drink just a real deal Coke once a week and just deal with that however I need to one every day and if you do just know that you're taking in that sugar exactly what are you going to do with it just know that you're taking in artificial sweeteners Mm -hmm. all day is that the best option and you're making that choice not I'm drinking a healthy soda I think that's the problem right like it's the healthy versus unhealthy Mm -hmm. so the problem for me is like we've got all these healthy options are they healthy options? And like, you could just lean into them and be like, well, this doesn't have this in it, but you're yeah. always making a trade off. Right. I mean, it's kind of like saying, and this is dramatic, but like, it's like, well, Cheetos are gluten free, so I'm going to eat those. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
there's a lot of other stuff. Right, you're, 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 you're just a lot of trading. Decisions that, right. So and, sugar's and bad, so I'm going to drink this. I okay? wanted at the start of this and the way that I was going into sodas, I wanted a rule for my life that was like, I don't drink this soda, but I can drink this soda. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's a conclusion that I can come to. I don't think that's mm-hmm. a conclusion we can come to. I think it's like the only rule I can have is I do drink soda or I don't drink soda. Mm-hmm. There's no healthy soda. No. There's no in between. There's no middle mm-hmm. ground because mm-hmm. there's no research to back that up. Right. It's just, and honestly, like if I'm going to drink a soda, I might as well just get the one I want. Right. And the one that's go- I'm going to enjoy and do it in moderation, like you say, mm-hmm. or don't. But to say, well, I drink Zevia, so that's fine. When I looked into Zevia, you were looking into, I'm not going to say it, you say it. This aspartame. Aspartame. I was looking into Zevia, and I was like, there's got to be a conclusion here to this. Like, is Zevia good? And when you go in the store now, there's chocolate made with Zevia that says no sugar chocolate. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of, like, confectionery and sodas and sweets mm-hmm. and everything that, like, now is, oh, Zevia is the hot trend. Yeah. And you look back only, like, five or six years, Zevia was banned from the U.S. market. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you can't, Zevia is not a healthy op- option as a sweetener. Mm-hmm. And Zevia comes from a plant, yeah. the chrysanthemum plant. You mm-hmm. can actually grow it mm-hmm. yourself, and it's 10 times sweeter than table sugar. Yeah. Or 20, I think. I think it's like, it's like 200. And that's how they get away. Well, that's how they get away with it being zero calorie because you only have to 200? use, yeah, you only have to Same use time. such a tiny, tiny yeah. amount yeah. that it's like, it doesn't even register. So you sweeten, and the same thing with aspartame and all these other things. If you look at a chart compared to just regular, like, Mm -hmm. table sugar, it's hundreds of times sweeter. So you just use a tiny little bit. You have no calories. But, yeah, does your body know what to do with it? Well, yeah, and, like, but I'm I'm thinking almost, like, Zevia was exciting to me because it's a plant. Mm -hmm. So it comes from nature, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then I look further into it, and they're like, Oh, you can't just take the leaves. And some cultures do. They've been using it for generations in Brazil and in uh, Japan. They've been using the stevia leaf for like teas and stuff like that. In America, can't do that. Mm-hmm. We don't know what effect that will have on your kidneys is apparently one of the things. But the processed down Zevia solution that we can sell is approved. Yeah, and it's... Because I was looking Zero at evidence that. on that or the plan. Right. They're both the same amount of study. Well, there were a lot of studies done on it in like the 80s and in the 90s. And the FDA kept saying, we can't approve it, we can't approve it, we can't approve it. Now, I'm not trying to stir the pot. But Good. all I know, <laughs> all I know, all Your I know go is that... Coca-Cola patented a way to dilute stevia into the crystallized form that we use and that's packaged. And that's and the it got one a, that's approved. It got approved the same year, 2008. So Do whatever you want. Whatever. whatever just That's just what happened. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't approved, wasn't approved a couple times. 2008, Coca-Cola gets the patent on it. FDA says it's okay the same year. Now we have stevia on all the shelves, a bunch now, of different brands. To play devil's advocate, maybe that's because this company went and did all the research and found a way to make it safe, right? Sure. Could be, yeah. yeah. Maybe there wasn't a way to we dilute it safely. Who knows? Yeah. And then they found a way. But the crazy thing is, is that other cultures have been drinking mm-hmm. the leaf. Yeah. In teas and in herbal products. Oh, yeah, you can so buy it and grow it. They just say, don't use it. It's just not recommended. It. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, because, like, to me, it seems like it's more natural than even sugar, right? Because even sugar mm-hmm. has to be processed down, like, in some way. Mm-hmm. Whereas these leaves, you can grow them and use them. Right. So just like a plant fiber. But mm-hmm. whenever it gets... I mean, it's not even stevia anymore at that point. After it gets down to that granulated, like, Mm. bleached white powder, it's, I don't know the chemical name. I wrote it down. But something completely different. Yeah. 
So to wrap it up, honestly, like rule for life, if you're a soda drinker, I would say there's no right or wrong between is aspartamine, did I say that right? Aspartame. Aspartame. And I wonder if in England they say it that way. Maybe. Maybe it's just a different like pronunciation, but it's the same word. Or um, Zevia Mm -hmm. and Stevia. We don't know one's healthier, I don't think, Mm-mm. right? From what we've looked at. Maybe, say it. Aspartame. Aspartame is more researched because mm-hmm. Zevia Stevia is a little bit newer. So it's honestly up to you. I would not do high fructose corn syrup, mm-hmm. which is banned everywhere but the U.S. So take that out. Mm-hmm. Regular Cokes. Look on the label. If it's high fructose corn syrup, don't drink that. Mm-hmm. That just, the process of watching that stuff be made is disgusting. Like, just don't put that in your body. Now, the other sweeteners, we don't know. Yeah. You make the choice. Um, a rule for life, if you want one, don't drink soda. I'm saying that, sitting here drinking one. Mm-hmm. That's my choice. I would like to stop, I think, after what we've just done. Um, maybe our next episode is us trying to find nice flavoring alternatives to sodas. Yeah. Yeah, I think what solidified that for me is it shouldn't have been that hard to research. I was on the computer for a couple hours reading article after article about dozens of different chemicals and compounds that are in these drinks and, and I should have no just further, I should have no just stopped. Along. No, I should have just stopped and been like anything that takes this long for me to figure out where it comes from and if it's okay for me to drink it yeah. probably just needs to be off the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It should have been a yes or a no. Yeah. It? Yeah. So yeah, it's fascinating. And so yeah. I think you just make your own choice. I would mm-hmm. say go for something like I I would probably take a Mexican Coke over any other Coke that Mm -hmm. I see just because I know it's got sugar in it and I can go and work out and I can use the calories and Mm -hmm. maybe I have one after a workout or, you know what I mean? Like, and then really enjoy it. Um, I would take that if it's in a store over any of the artificial stuff Mm -hmm. now. (laughs) Um, But for somebody with real problems and like sugar addictions I know that's not an option no. right and I don't know that a diet version or a zero version is better so it's on you to go and find some replacement I think and a lot of places will say just drink a coconut water some people find that disgusting yeah. I struggled to adapt to coconut water for a while that's why I still drink some versions of sodas mm-hmm. um, but I would like to keep finding replacements together because i like nice flavored drinks yeah right it's something that i really enjoy i'm not a big water drinker i'm not Mm -hmm. a big coconut water drinker you know so it's a good one it's a good little topic we've delved into here yeah i think we did good of skirting the lines of anything controversial really like we just want you to make your own decisions and be informed and not think i'm drinking this healthy soda so i can have five of them today Mm -hmm when you don't really know what's in it and how approved it is and how good for you this artificial sweetener is. And maybe you're just throwing them artificial sweeteners in your coffees and stuff too. Right. Yeah, there's very few... Why is there no agave sodas? Why is there no agave soda? It's a good question. I wonder if it doesn't, um, like, package well. You're a big agave person, aren't you? I like tequila. That's what I'm saying. But I don't I don't really use like sweeten like the syrup or anything. Yeah. That's another option. You could just drink tequila. <laughs> I should have I should have brought that. Yeah. Replace your sodas with tequila and see what happens to your life. <laughs> you get a lot more interesting. <laughs> At lunchtime. Savannah told me it's better. My health coach said <laughs> yeah, that I yeah. need to quit. Blame drinking. my gym. <laughs> yeah don't do that folks Mm -mm. 
No. All right. I think that's where we'll end part two of that. Okay. What else you got? All right, this week. I can't believe you're not going to bring up the athlete levels. Oh, I didn't. I figured that was a podcast in itself. That is, but we can preview it. Right? Yeah. Like, I want it to be printed out when we dig yeah. into it. But I want it, like, back here when we go yeah. over it. Yeah, we're, um, I mean, hopefully by next week mm-hmm. it'll be printed out in the gym somewhere for you to reference. Yeah. And it was a lot more involved than I thought it was going to be, but I love what it's turned into. Yeah. We're going to have different targets for each level. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we named them pretty cool, like rookie is level one, Mm -hmm. um, sophomore, senior, and then all the way up to varsity is level four. And it just gives you like a reference for every movement that we focus on in Oxford Mm -hmm. and where you are as an athlete on them levels. Um, And then it's something we've got to reference on baseline weeks and test weeks and give you a good idea of your journey from the day you walked in to two years down the line three years down the line how far you've come as an athlete Mm -hmm. and i mean we put a lot of work into it right you did you've been testing yeah you've been testing multiple i've been working out a lot (laughs) but Um, it's been fun i like um I like doing that. It's made me excited to get better, so I know it'll make everyone else excited to kind of see where they land on the chart and what they can aim for. And the cool thing is it's you versus you, right? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of something that we did when we first opened, pretty much. We had test days, and you would have to complete 8 out of 10 in the one hour, and Mm -hmm. it was so stressful, especially to coach. Yeah. Like, that was the hardest sessions I'd ever coached in my life, like... 10 to 15 people all wanted to test out movements and you've got one hour and mm-hmm. some of them were like lifts yeah in the warm hour up and you gotta with, oh yeah and there was no warm up time so it was no a bad way to do it now we're going to come up with a good way to do it where we'll test everything across the year mm-hmm. so then you'll have a whole season of results that yeah you can look back on each year and it'll be more exciting to see the growth year to year rather mm-hmm. than week to week you know yeah I do really like the shift we're doing to a more like just more continuity throughout the year instead of we're testing this this cycle and then you'll see it again next year yeah where it's like no we're in an endurance cycle but we're still going to test your deadlift and your back squat and yeah we're just we're testing just... a different element of that it'd be like right. your deadlift endurance yeah. rather than your deadlift one rep max and mm-hmm. like it'll, you'll always be seeing the similar mm-hmm. movements and like you said the continuation as well make it more fun mm-hmm. that you're not like oh, I can't wait to get back on the barbell again or I can't wait to mm-hmm. and that's why we've been working so hard to try new things yeah what's worked we keep what doesn't work is gone and that's how we're not like romantic about it mm-hmm. we decide like that was cool our athletes like that that didn't really go well our athletes didn't like that we didn't like that we didn't enjoy coaching that get rid of it yeah you know and that's the beauty of I think how we work together Mm -hmm. is that me and you don't sit around and go but uh this is the way it's always been there you go let's try this Mm -hmm. did it work nope did it work yeah oh lean into that Mm -hmm. get rid of that you know and that's why you see our program continually growing and evolving yep rather than this is the same gym i walked into in 2016 like you, I don't think you could recognize the way our workouts are, the way our setup is, the way our classes run, the way our test weeks work, the way our base, like it's, it's constantly evolving for us to try and find the best thing. Mm-hmm. And then with some of the new equipment, I absolutely love it. Don't you? Yeah, I do. I love looking around the gym and seeing all the different things we have, especially like new people coming in that have been to gyms like this before mm. and they come in and they're like, oh shit like you guys have that what's that what's that over there i was like good you don't know what all this stuff is and you don't know what we use it for like i can't and the creative ways that you program some of this stuff like mm-hmm. um we got a heavy rope and we got kettlebells now we're doing mm-hmm. heavy rope bicep curls you know the kettlebell mm-hmm. like oh we've got handles oh they're attached to the sleds and they're attached to bands and you know what i mean like it's just we use everything in so many creative ways yeah rather than it just be well, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. People will be like, what are we using the kettlebell for today? 
Yeah. It's like good. You don't think it's just right. for kettlebell swings. It yeah. could be for anything. Are we carrying it. Are we squatting it. Yeah. Are we bicep killing it. Are we, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fun. So yeah, I'm. I think from now. The next cycle, I'm very excited to see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And what I'm most excited about is I think this time next year, it will have evolved to be a little bit better, but it'll be very similar because I think we're going to find a pattern here that works. Yeah. So it'll be whatever we do next year will be replicatable across the following year that you'll have two years worth of data that's exactly like, Oh, I can plot mm-hmm. what what events are coming, mm-hmm. what strength I'm working on, what what my weaknesses evolved from and to now, and it's just like. I think you said it best. The best thing in our athlete levels is more useful human being. Yeah, is what you will be mm-hmm. from what we're doing. Not like oh. I'm the fittest. I'm the strongest. You just be more useful. Like you'd be able to do more things. Mm-hmm. If we have. A lift off coming up, you'll be ready. If you we have a deck coming up, you'll be ready. Triathlon, you'll be ready. Marathon, whatever it is, you'll be ready for it just by showing up. So, absolutely. Cool. I think we dig more into that when we get it printed out. But yeah, we have it in front of us for sure. You got a triathlon this weekend? Yes, I Your do. Your first triathlon? Yes, it is my first. Olympic triathlon. Olympic. So you didn't go in with a sprint. You were like, let's yep. go. Yep. And feeling good. Yeah. Feeling ready. A little bit nervous about, about the bike. The bike. Yes. Oh shit. I'm excited Nobody for this swim. I know. Well, <laughs> I rode the bike for the first time, mm-hmm. which I've been doing stationary bike. Yeah. Fitness wise, I've got it. Coordination wise, which is weird because I feel like I'm a pretty athletic person. I don't get like tripped up on a whole lot of stuff. Man, that bike is flimsy. So you just didn't grow up riding a bike? I did, but I grew up riding, like, the Huffies, like, normal outside bikes. I've never ridden a road bike. Oh, and then It's, like, tires. this big. Yep. And it weighs as much as that can of Zevia. Mm-hmm. So it'll be fine. It'll be great. Yeah. Just don't, on the bike, just be careful. Just don't yeah. rush. Be confident, though, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's the key. But also, you've heard the term, term, it's just like riding a bike. So mm-hmm. once you get on there, once you get going, you'll be fine. You'll finish that bike ride to the next bit on the bike. Yeah, you just got to do it once. Which I feel like this is going to be one of the favorite, my favorite things I've done. Because I love a workout that I can check things off. Mm-hmm. I like a chipper, and I feel like that's what this is, just a really big checklist. And the crazy thing about this as an event is there's no way you'd be able to just do it once. Because... Mm-hmm. You go in with no experience, you'll do it, and then you'll be like, all right, next year I have to, now I'll be confident next mm-hmm. year, and I can go and, like, m- enjoy it more. Because, mm-hmm. like, there's there's something to be said about enjoying nerves and, like, being scared of something. Like, that's great, right? I love being in that position. But also there's something about being confident and attacking something as well that, like, is a different experience, you know? Yeah. Some of the people that are coming again this year, are very excited to attack it, right? Like, damn, mm-hmm. he's done it. That was his first one. He was, I know he was scared. Yeah. Right? I could see it in his eyes, like, but he crushed it. Mm-hmm. And then now he's back again. And now he wants to go be all his yeah. times and like be in it even more. And it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, ex- I'm really excited. How excited. many athletes are going? Um, I need to do my final count. We're at least 20. That's crazy. Yeah. What did we have last year? Eight? Mm-hmm. 20 athletes. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. I'm pumped. 20 Oxford athletes at the beach. Mm-hmm. Damn. Ox on the beach. Let's go. 